Hey, good evening. Thank you for uh, joining me for Revelation Hour. We're going to wait just a moment, let some people get signed on live. And um, while we're waiting, if you would, please comment where you're watching from. Please share this video. And uh, we will be ending the introduction part of Revelation tonight, the book of Revelation. No S. Um, and uh, we'll be getting into... You know what? I'm, I don't need to say that. We may... I don't really know where we'll stop. I started to say we may get into the John's vision of Jesus Christ, but we may get there tonight. But um, I want to start with verse 9. We, we stopped with verse 8 last time. And uh, please let me know where you're watching from again. Thank you for joining me. I hope wherever you're at tonight that, uh, that you're blessed and doing well. Um, looking forward to Christmas. And I want to go ahead and take this time while we're waiting for people to sign on to wish each and every one of you a very Merry Christmas. And um, as we celebrate the birth of our Savior, um, I just want to say that it's been a joy this year to come to you with the Word of God and to be able to share the Word with you. It's, it's a privilege. I'm grateful. I'm thankful uh, to be able to share God's Word with you. And I'm thankful, grateful to God for allowing me to do that right here on the back porch of my home. So... It's just a blessing, and I thank you for joining me. I want to go uh, to prayer right quick before we get started. Father in heaven, I thank you, Lord, uh, as I just mentioned, for this um, platform to be able to uh, share your word. Lord, you, your word says in the book of Revelation is a, uh, a there's a special blessing when we read it, when we hear it, and we obey it. I pray, Lord, that we you give us eyes to see and ears to hear open our spiritual understanding. I pray that if there be anybody watching tonight that's lost and doesn't know you, that conviction of the Holy Spirit will come upon them and they'll realize that we're in the final hour and, Lord, that the urgency to come to you will be very apparent and they'll get saved tonight. I give you the praise and the glory. And, Lord, I, I ask for my brothers and sisters to be encouraged or so much to discourage, but, Lord, I pray that we be encouraged in you. And we give you the praise and the glory for that as well. For us in Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. Revelation. The verse 9. You got your, you got your Bibles? Revelation verse 9. All right. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Verse 8. We stop with verse 7. I'm Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is, which was, and which is to come. The Almighty. I want to go ahead and read some more. I, John, was also, I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation, and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, and heard behind me a great voice as a trumpet, saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest, write in a book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia unto Ephesus, and Smyrna, and Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and Sardis, and to Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one unto like the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, girt about with paps, with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. And his feet like it to brass as if they burned in a furnace. And his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars. And out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. And his countenance was as the sun shineth in its strength. And when I saw him, I fell at, fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and I am the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold... I live forevermore, amen, and have the keys of hell and death. Write these things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. Hallelujah, praise God. I, just, I, I had to read all of that, but I know verse 8 is what I wanted to focus on. We're in a world that's obsessed with uh, all kind of different things. But in the news, we're in the world, our world's obsessed with Omicron. It's obsessed with 
with the variant that we're dealing with now and it's obsessed with um, what's going on in the, the world with Russia and Ukraine and, 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 and China and all this other stuff. But the truth of the matter is I'm not focused on the Omicron and all this other stuff. I'm focused on the Alpha and Omega, and that's the one that we need to have our eyes on tonight. Today, we need to be looking at the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. He, he is the one that started everything. And when I thought about this today and thinking about coming to you, I thought how much the world has changed, how different everything seems to be. I can remember when it was happier times. I can remember when maybe it was because I was younger, but it just seemed like the world was just a happier place. I told my wife, I miss the 80s and the 90s because it just seemed that everything was just a happier place. But yet, even though the world is changing forevermore, I know that God does not change. And that's an assurance that you and I have. And when we read the book of Revelation, there's we should find peace and love and joy and happiness. That's what that word blessed means, by the way. Blessed is he that reads and keeps this book. And That blessing is happiness. And the reason we can be happy is because of what he just said. He's the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. He's the one that's in control of every single thing that we see transpiring around the world. Everything is coming to a point, to that time when the Lord is going to judge this world. And I thank God that my judgment was already handled at the cross. And I pray that yours was already handled at the cross as well. If you don't know what I'm talking about and you're curious about that, I want to just say this. When Jesus went to the cross, it was for you. It was personal for you. It was personal for him and personal for you. He died for every single one of us, each one of us, individually, in our place. And God, the Alpha and Omega, our Father, put the sins of all the world, mankind, upon his Son, your sins and mine. And when he died, he rose again the third day and overcome death, hell, and the grave. And he's coming back. And that is the theme of the book of Revelation. It's the fact that God is coming back. The rapture is going to come any moment now. Nothing else has to happen prophetically for the rapture of the church. Christ could come back now immediately. But for him to come the second coming or the second time he comes, let me just say, how, how should I word this? Because, again, I'm not a scholar. But he's coming back the first time. He won't touch the ground. The church will be raptured up. But when he comes back again, he's coming back in with clouds. And that word clouds can mean a lot of things. You know, the Bible says, I believe it was Adrian Rogers that, that I heard say this, that uh, we're surrounded by so great a cloud of witness. And he believed that that cloud, when it says he comes with clouds, is, is the cloud of witness, the saints, the angels, all of us coming together. Hallelujah, what a glorious time that will be. And if you're a child of God, you have nothing to fear in the book of Revelation. There is nothing in this book that you should fear. We should fear God. We should have a, a reverent, holy fear for God. As a matter of fact, that's really what's wrong in our country today. If you really want to know what the, just boil it down to the, the, the most, what is, what is the singular problem in our country, there's no fear of God. The fear of God, by the fear of God, men uh, gain knowledge, but gain wisdom. Men depart from evil by the fear of God. And you know, maybe that's why things are a little bit uh, stranger to me now than they used to be because I can remember a time, and maybe you can too, when people did fear God. When it seemed that even though somebody might not be living for the Lord, they still had respect for God and reverence. But we see the Satan through many different avenues has tried to steal that reverence and that, that respect that we have for God. This country was founded on Judeo-Christian values. It was founded on Jehovah, uh, the, the great I Am, the one I'm going to talk about here tonight. Our country was founded on the, 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 the Bible, the Word of God. And over time, people have tried to come away from that. The devil has tried to steer us away from that because he has an agenda. And we can see the agenda unfolding before us. But see, God has a plan too. And guess what? You and I are a part of it. Somebody needs to say amen right there. We're a part of God's plan, and I give him the praise and the glory. Yeah, the world's changed. We're not in the 80s or the 90s anymore. That's for, that's a fact, but I can tell you what. Jesus hadn't changed. He says, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Hallelujah. God says, I'm the Lord God. I change not. He hasn't changed. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He started everything. He put the world into existence. Even beyond eternity, he has done everything, and he will end 
everything. What a power. What a, what a, what a blessing. What an assurance. What a hope. Hallelujah. To know that our God is in control in spite of of what everybody says. Oh, it's an Omicron Christmas. No, I'm having an Alpha and Omega Christmas. I'm having a Christmas that says I, this, this Christmas is even more special because I believe without a shadow of a doubt that we're on the edge of the return of Jesus Christ. And who knows when that is? Only God the Father does. But because of the way things are going and because of the great reproach coming against the church and them wanting us not to worship, not to come, they, you can go to Lowe's, you can go to a liquor store, but don't go to church when COVID broke out. Now they're saying, well, if you've got non-vax people in your family, don't invite them. Let me tell you something. I'm going to have a non-vax Christmas, and I'm going to give God the praise and the glory for freedom and liberty in this country and the freedom and liberty of the Holy Spirit of God. Somebody please say amen. I feel like I'm preaching tonight. He says that he's from everlasting to everlasting. Think about that. God doesn't change. This world is, has gone crazy. This world is changing. God doesn't change. He says every good gift is, comes, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, who where there is no variableness nor shadow of turning. He doesn't change. He'll never change. We can depend on that. You know, I don't have to worry about the Lord uh, giving up on me and saying I don't love him anymore. I fell out of love with him. I don't have to worry about that with God because he doesn't change. I don't have to worry that somehow I lose my salvation because I screw up and make a mistake or do something I, uh, I, that's wrong. I repent and come back to him and say, Lord, forgive me. The Holy Spirit convicts me. But he doesn't throw me out, throw the baby out with the bath, bath water. God loves you. And God's not going to change. This world is changing. But I have something to let you, I, I want to share this with you that even though this world is changing and we're moving at a rapid pace, it's headed in the exact direction that God wants it to head into. Because in the book of Revelation, we will see the glory of God. We will see the judgment of God. And we will see how God is going to set everything back the way it should be. He's not ever going to change. He's never going to change. He's the Lord. And He changes not. I'll tell you something else. There's nobody like Him. There's nobody like Him. The Bible says, remember the former things of old. For I am God and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times to things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do my pleasure. God's going to do what God wants to do. There's not a devil in hell that can stop what he's already put in motion. And we, we understand, as Christians, we're supposed to understand that we're going to face tribulation, persecution, things are going to come against us, he didn't tell us it was going to be easy. He didn't say we would, we would not have any problems. But he did say, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. He did say, greater is he that's in you than he that's in this world. He did say that we're more than conquerors through Christ Jesus who loves us. We need to focus on the facts. And the fact is, the Alpha and Omega, the beginning of the end, the beginning and the end, does not change. And there's nobody like him. There's no God like him. He is the God. Look into me and be saved all the ends of the earth, for I am God and there is none else. There is no other God. There's no other God. Some people say, why can't you be a little bit nicer toward other religions? Why can't you be accepting? And now you know why? Because that would be a lie. That would be a lie that would damn your soul for me to tell you you can, you can find any other way to God besides Jesus Christ. It's a lie. And if we as Christians don't stand on the truth, how will the world see the truth? He's the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. And he set in motion the gospel. When Adam and Eve fell in the garden, he knew that he was going to come through, through that lineage, through David. He was going to bring the son of David, Jesus Christ, was going to come to this earth and be born in a, from a virgin and, he, and come to die for our sins. God knew what he was going to do. Before the foundations of the world, he had already decided what he was going to do with us. He doesn't change. He's not going to change, and there's nobody like him. For by him we are all things created that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible. Whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him, for him. He is before all things, and by him all things consist. 
if Jesus Christ was to let go, this whole world would be in complete chaos. The whole universe was. He holds everything together. Everything consists of Him. This, again, should give you assurance as a child of God that you have nothing to fear. There is nothing that's going to spin out of control and, and separate you from God. God is in complete control and has complete authority. And with Christmas approaching us, tomorrow being Christmas Eve, we should focus on the joy and the peace that Christmas, that we celebrate. We celebrate Jesus Christ. I don't, I don't like this thing where people say, oh, happy holidays. Listen, it's about Jesus Christ. Merry Christmas. It's about Jesus Christ. It's about Christ, the Son of the living God, the one that says he is with us. Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is, interpreted is God with us. In the, that scripture that I read, I'm the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, we see a picture of, of, of a God that we can't comprehend, a God that his ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts. And we think sometimes he's untouchable. He's, he's far beyond our reach. But that's the furthest thing from the truth. Because when Jesus Christ died and went to the tomb and rose again the third day, he made a way that the Holy Spirit, God's Spirit, could live within a believer. God doesn't dwell in temples made by man's hand. That's one place we've got it wrong. That's one place we've got an obsession. I, I, I hear, and I, some of my favorite preachers, I've got preachers I listen to a lot, a couple that I really like, and I've even heard them say, well, we're, welcome to the house of God. You're not in the house of God. You are the house of God. When we gather in a building, it's a building. Whether it's got a steeple on it or not, it's a brick, mortar building, wood building. But you and I, the Bible says, not David, the Bible says what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. The God of glory, the great I Am, wants to dwell with and in His people. Hallelujah. He is a good God. And He has, as I mentioned before, has a plan for us, and we're in it. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon His shoulders, and His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment, with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. I'm glad that my Savior has everything covered. I don't have to try to figure anything out. I don't, I don't have to try to uh, figure things out for myself about where we're going. I know without a shadow of a doubt that the Lord Jesus Christ has this government upon his shoulders. He's bearing this burden. He's the one that bears all the burden. We may try to hold on to these burdens sometimes. Sometimes we want to carry things ourselves. But I promise you, he says, cast your cares upon me. He says his burden is easy. He wants you to cast your cares upon him. He wants you to trust him. He says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. He's got a plan and a purpose for your life. When we're looking at Scripture, verse 8, he starts off with, I am. I am the Alpha and Omega. I am. When, where, why does that ring a bell? We go all the way back to Exodus when God was talking to Moses and telling him he needed to go and tell the people, his children, that he's, they're, he's gonna, they're gonna be delivered. And God said, well, who, who, what do I tell them your name is? Who, who, who are you? What do I say? I don't, know who, I don't know your name. And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, thus shalt thou say unto the children of, children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. Jesus said, verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. That was such a, a huge boulder dropped on the religious Pharisees and Sadducees when Jesus told them that because they understood what I am meant. They understood that God the Father calls himself the I am. And when Jesus said before Moses, before Abraham, I am. He, was in the, he is the word. He is the, uh, 
always been with God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was always with Him. God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father but by me. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I'll give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And he that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have light of life. He's the I am. Do you know him? Do you know who he is? Have you ever met him? I met him on a golf course. I met him January 18, 2003 on T-Box number 15. And when I met the Lord of glory, I knew, to, knew immediately that what he says he is and who he says he is is true. His love, his power, his grace, his mercy, the forgiveness that he had for me. And as I was reading through this today and thinking on how big God is and what little bit of my small mind can comprehend, that big, wonderful, huge, just God of glory took the time to come and, and meet with me to save my soul and to fill me with love and with power and still has called me and set me apart to be used by him. And each and every one of us have a purpose and a plan in our lives. God is wanting to set you apart and use you. He wants you to be used by him. And he'll open them doors for you. As a matter of fact, Jesus said, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and shall find pasture. He's, he's, uh, he's the good shepherd. He says, I am the good shepherd. I am. That's such a powerful statement in verse 8. I am. Tell you what else he said. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believeth thou this? Believeth thou this? Do you believe that? Do you believe that if you believe in Jesus Christ, you'll never die? Think about it. You'll never die. You say, man, that's, you're crazy. You, everybody dies. I'm not talking about physical. I'm talking spiritual. See, when it comes down to it, this book of Revelation is a book of another dimension. It's, it's a book of another, an, another plane. It's a spiritual plane. There are things in this book that we're going to get to that will just blow your mind. Things that God has in store. And we don't know how wonderful heaven is. We get a taste of heaven by, through the Holy Spirit. But God has created things that we don't have any clue and probably honestly couldn't even fathom or enjoy them in our bodies. We'd have to have glorified bodies to even enjoy what God has for us. God has big plans in store for you and I. And God has plans in store for this world. And I want to make sure through this study uh, during Revelation Hour that if there's anybody out there that doesn't know the I Am, if you don't know the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, if you don't know the Almighty, I want you to know him. I want you to come to know him tonight because we are we're in perilous times. We're in dangerous times. And the Bible says in the last days there will be perilous times. It will be very dangerous. And the Bible is fulfilling itself, is fulfilled and fulfilling itself daily. And we need to be aware. And if you sense that the Spirit of God is drawing you and you know without a shadow of a doubt that God, the Holy Ghost, is speaking to you, it's time for you to come to Christ tonight. I thought when we started this study on the book of Revelation that I would be teaching, but I believe really that the Lord is wanting to use this as an evangelistic tool to reach people that are trying to figure out what is happening in our world. What is going on? I don't understand. And God wants you to have clarity of understanding of who he is and what he is about to do and the state of mankind and more importantly your state where you are between you and your God because make no mistake about it whether you surrender to him and are born again or reject him he is still the God the God the great I am Alpha and Omega the beginning and the end the beginning and the end he says in the end of that verse he says the Almighty the Almighty that word in the Greek I'm not even going to try to pronounce it but basically means all controller, all ruler. That's what it means. He controls everything. He controls all the atoms. He controls space and time and matter. 
He controls all the things. Stephen Hawkins and all these these guys, these guys, brilliant people, Einstein, all these people that were trying to discover through science, understand the mysteries of physics and the mystery of the world, the universe. God, there is no mysteries for him. He is the creator and the controller of all things. And when we get to heaven, we'll have that knowledge. We'll have the understanding of all things because we'll be with God. And we'll be able to understand some of the things that we didn't understand when we were here. Why did this happen? Why did that have to, have to happen? We'll know when we get with him. Nothing can snatch us out of his hand. Nothing. The one that spins this universe, this world, this everything, nothing can snatch you and I from his hand. That's an assurance, again, that no matter what we face, no matter what's happening around us in the world, God's got me. God has got me, and he's got you. I want to read something to you. Jesus said, I give them eternal life. Who's he talking about? Christians, my children, his children. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them to me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. The I am. If you think for one minute that it's going to get better, if this country and this world is going to somehow come back to a state of, like I mentioned in the beginning of this video, the 80s and 90s, a good time, everybody's happy. It's not going to happen. And I'm not, I'm not being negative, but I'm going to be straight up with you. I'm being honest with you. The Bible says it's going to wax worse and worse. There's going to be lawlessness. There's going to be more pestilence, more disease. A lot of things are coming. But we don't have to fear because the one that has put everything in motion and will end it all is the one that's reaching out to you tonight and saying, come unto me, all you that are weary and heavy laden, I will give you rest. You've been trying to tote the burdens. You, you feel of, you're full of anxiety and fear. And God is saying, come to me. You need to come to him tonight, not because he's going to make you rich, which he, he's not physically, probably not. Not because you're going to get a new car or a Rolex or not because it'll be your best day now. That's a false gospel. You come to Christ because of your sin put a holy God, the I am, on the cross. He chose the cross. It's a foolish thing to us that are lost, to those that are lost, but to us that are saved, it's the power of God. He chose the cross to redeem mankind. The sins of the world is why he went to that cross. In the span of eternity, from the beginning and the ending, he chose a point in time to go to that cross and make a way for you and I to be saved. You say, I've sinned too much. I've done too much. He would never receive me. I'm telling you tonight, that is a lie from hell. The Satan has planted in your mind. God will save you tonight. God will forgive all sin. He will forgive every sin you've ever committed. He will change your life. He will completely renew you. The Bible says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. People may keep a record of what you've done. They may remember your past and your history. But God Almighty, the great I Am, the Alpha and Omega, He casts your sins away from Him as far as the east is to the west. And He forgives and He moves on. He forgets and He, he listens to His children. He loves to have fellowship with us when you come and pray to Him. When you seek His face. When you... Spend time with him. But if you don't know him, if you've never been born again, you don't have that relationship. What you have is a wrath and a judgment that abides over your head that at any moment could fall. Why don't you receive Christ tonight? Why don't you come to Jesus Christ tonight and be born again? The one I read about tonight, the Alpha and Omega, the I Am. The Bible says, God says in Isaiah, Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. He will change everything. That's what he does. He has the power to change everything in your life to set you free tonight. Behold, the Lord's hand is not short that he cannot save, neither is his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, 
and your sins that he has hid his face from you that he will not hear. You just said he hears me, David. He will hear a sinner when you call out to him and say, Lord, Jesus, I need you. I want, I want to be forgiven. I want to be saved. I don't want to face the judgment and the wrath that's coming. I received that free gift of salvation tonight. I want that gift. Right, right where you're at, in repentance, turn from your sin. That means to turn. You turn from your sin, you turn to God. You turn to Jesus Christ, who hung on a cross and shed his blood for you. Died in your place. Took death and hell for us. And rose again the third day. If you believe that by faith, Jesus said if you uh, put your faith in him, he, you put all your faith and hope and trust in him in the cross, the finished work of the cross, the Bible teaches us God will save us. The Bible says whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. His name is Jesus. Call on, why don't you call on him tonight? Call on him wherever you're at. Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. Please forgive me. I believe that you died for me. I believe you rose again the third day. I put my faith in you. I want you to be the Lord of my life, and I'm going to follow you. If you've made that decision tonight, I don't know who you are, but God does. And maybe you're the only reason we do, or did this video tonight. You're just one person that will say, I am just one. If that's you, I want you to type that in. Why? Because we do these videos for just, just one. If more get saved, praise God, but it's for just one. Why? Because... Jesus said there's more rejoicing over one sinner that repents more than 99 that need no repentance because of the value of your soul. Your soul is worth more than this entire world. What would it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Salvation is an easy thing for us to receive. It was a terrible price that was paid for our, by our Savior. And Christmas, we celebrate his birth. But really, he came to die. He was born to die for you and for me. And if you've decided tonight to put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ and receive him as your personal Savior by repenting, turning from your sins, asking him to forgive you and receiving him and, say, Lord, and, and choosing to follow him, we have to follow him. If you've made that decision, I want you to type in, I am just one. And you're making it public. People will see it. But that's a good thing. Because he says, if you're ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you when you come before my Father and the Holy Angel. He wasn't ashamed of you when he hung on the cross. He wasn't ashamed of your addiction when he hung on the cross. He wasn't ashamed of that, your alcoholism. He wasn't ashamed of uh, the adultery in your life. He wasn't ashamed of the pornography that you're on, hooked on. He wasn't ashamed of all the sins, the lies. He wasn't ashamed of that. He knew where you'd be tonight. He knew what would be going through your mind and your heart. And he knew that I would be on Facebook preaching the gospel to you. He dealt with your sin on the cross. Why don't you receive that free gift tonight by simply saying, Lord, I'm a sinner. Lord Jesus, save me. I turn from my sin. I believe and trust in you. I'm going to follow you. I want you to be the Lord of my life. I am just one. You type that in, make it public. And then when we see that, the second reason we ask you to type that in is we'll message you, we'll send you a free Bible and some literature to help you get started on your Christian walk because of people that donate to this ministry. We send a whole packet of material because we want you to get started on your Christian walk the right way. I pray that this has blessed you tonight. I know we only covered one verse, but uh, we're going to get in next Thursday night the vision that John had of Jesus Christ, what I read um, through the chapter 1. Guys, again, Merry Christmas. Remember, remember what he done for us. Remember why you're here. You're not here by accident. It's not, it's not a fluke thing that we're here in a, a, a period of time that seems so hectic, and chaotic, and confusing. We're here for a reason. We're here to be the light of this world and the salt of the earth. Take advantage of your witness and testimony by looking around and saying, you know, I can make a difference. I can make a difference through Christ. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. 
you can make a difference in somebody's life by simply sharing the gospel. There have been people that have messaged us about things that have happened in their lives by hearing the gospel preached, how their lives were changed, addictions broken, all kind of different things. And you know, when you look back and you think about it and you, you look at them people in their lives and you're grateful and you thank God, but you realize right off the bat, it was the power of the gospel, the Holy Spirit of God that worked through us and reached them. And the same is true for you. God will work through a willing vessel. If you are willing as a child of God to be used by God in these last days, he will use us. There's a lot of people that don't want to be used. There's a lot of people that don't want to rock the boat. There's people that basically you're, they're just lazy, to be quite honest with you, apathetic, complacent. God is looking for a people, for his people to rise up and stand. We need a vision of Jesus Christ. We need a vision of who he is, and we're going to catch that vision next Thursday night. We need to realize that when he comes back, he's coming back with all power and all glory. And all the suffering, all the heartache, all the pain, all the anxieties, all the fears, all the stuff that's been going on, it'll be gone. You won't even, there won't even be no tears in heaven. He says he'll wipe away all the tears. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. It's going to be a wonderful time, and it's not far away. We live to be 100, and Christ tarries and doesn't come back before then. What's 100 years? Look how fast 50's flown for me. We are looking at eternity, and we're dealing with eternal things in this word. This is eternal. This is forever settled in all of eternity. And I praise him. I, I praise you, Lord, for the opportunity to share your word. I praise you for salvation. I praise you for sending Jesus Christ to this earth to die for my sins. And I praise you that you rose him up the third day. And I praise you. I am Alpha and Omega. I praise you, Jehovah, that Jesus is about to step out on that cloud. And the dead in Christ are going to rise first. And we which are alive and remain will be caught up together and be with him in the air. You say, David, do you believe that? You better believe I believe that because I believe the Bible. I believe what the Word of God says. I believe, let, hey, let every man be a liar, but God is, tells the truth. God does not lie. My faith is not in this world. My faith is not in people. My faith is in the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's where it should be because man will let you down. I'll let you down. People will let it. Let, we all let each other down. But God has never let me down. He has never done something that I, I, I thought, I can't believe you would do such a thing and let me down like that. There's been times when I couldn't understand what he was doing. And I thought, well, Lord, what are you doing? But he has never let me down because even through all that time of wondering where we're going, when we all got to the other side, I realized just as the disciples did when they were on the stormy sea, God was in control the whole time. He knew where I was at. He saw me in the darkness. He's the one that allowed the storm to come. He's the one that allowed all of this to transpire. But he had a purpose and a plan for it. And no weapon formed against me is going to prosper. Because my God is the God, the only God. He's the one that's got me and protecting me. And I'm in his hand. And nothing can take me out of his hand. Nothing. And I praise you for that, Lord. Father, I pray for those that are watching. Lord, I pray if there be any just ones tonight, Lord, I praise you for that. I give you the praise and the glory. Lord, I pray that this word would take root in our hearts. And Lord, that we'd be a greater witness for you tomorrow. I pray we have a zeal to be and more passion to stand for Jesus Christ in these last days boldly and proclaim that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God, and we give you all the praise and all the glory. Let the words of our mouth, the meditation of our hearts, be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our Redeemer, in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for being with me, and uh, Merry Christmas.